four players suspended, of course, uh, as their manager, Carlos Bellardo, says West Germany really are in better shape. The most notable absentee, Kinesia, score of two of their goals, his replacement, he's quick and stylish, that's De Zotti at number nine. The Germans were there at full strength. Pierre Litbarski has recovered from injury, so too has Rudy Vola. The key man is Lothar Mateus, number 10. In fact, as Graham Taylor now points out, the whole key to the game surrounds the two number 10s. Lothar Mateus, West Germany's captain and powerful midfield influence. Here he is on a tremendous run going past England's quickest defender, Des Walker, before being somewhat unfortunate at a vital time. His greatest strength, however, is these runs from midfield going at the heart of the opposition defenders and against Yugoslavia, finishing off with a tremendous right foot shot. Once again, the same runs against Holland before laying the ball out to Klinsmann and then showing a goal scorer's instinct by getting to the back of defenders and is somewhat unfortunate with a very good and powerful header. No nerves from the penalty spot and if West Germany are to win, this man will be at the centre of the action. Diego Maradona, arguably still the world's best player. 20 seconds of this man can undo the best of defences as he shows here against Brazil before releasing a tremendous pass to his partner Kaniga to put the Brazilians out of the competition. His ability to roll and turn defenders is second to none. The most fouled player in the World Cup. Here, a number of Italian players have a go at Maradona before he finally succumbs to either the third or fourth tattle. Here he is riding another tattle before being brought down in the most brutal fashion. He is a constant source of joy to Argentina. This is his favourite gesture, but I suspect that he will need a direct connection if he is to lift the trophy today. Some people think he has a direct connection. Graham Taylor, thanks very much. Jim, you go for West Germany. <laughs> I right. do, I do, because I've always felt that they were the best team right from the off. As you know, I tipped them. And your key man? Well, I think there are many key men. Klinsman, of course, I think if he plays well tonight, uh, and like he did against the Dutch, I think we'll take a lot of stop in. He, he's a very direct player. Here, this is Bremer's cross. Great header. And he's always looking for goals, which is the key to it. And he likes to take people on. And he, he's strong. This was, this was a great piece of play. And he gets his toe in there before the defender. And we all know that's what you've got to do. This was a great effort. This was where he ran for 90 minutes during the Dutch game. He, he chased every ball. And he was very unlucky not to have been rewarded then. And against uh, Czechoslovakia, when he takes players on, I think this is what happens. Sometimes I don't think he knows what he's going to do with the ball, and therefore the defenders don't, and he confuses them. And I think if he goes for the Argentinians tonight, he can create that sort of havoc. Ian, you are the only one of our experts who's gone for Argentina. How can you do this? I can do it simply because I want you to be different, Nick. Uh, Germany, of course, are their favourites, but I would remind you, James, that, that Graf and Becker were also favourites, and people were talking about the big German treble, mm -hmm. and it hasn't happened. So I'm going for it. Now, one of the key men, of course, is the goalkeeper. Uh, the young, inexperienced goalkeeper, I have to say, Goy Kachia, who came in for uh, Pompidou when he got injured. I was at that game uh, when the lad came on, and he was very nervous at first, and I thought, oh, you know, he might throw one or two on. But then he started to, to get to grips with it. And as the tournament's gone on, he's, he's become, I think, a very good goalkeeper, and he's looking the part. But again, tonight, he's going to be under an awful lot of pressure, I and mean, he will have to be really on his toes. But if it comes to the pens, he's not bad. We saved four, I think. Yes, right he's not bad. I'll tell you, and, uh, you know, it, as I say, he is a key figure tonight, and if he plays to form, I do think that the Argentina have got better, and they will play defensively, and they will make it very difficult for Germany. And with uh, Maradona and uh, the new player who they're bringing in, De Zotti, who's a good player, scores goals as well, plays in the Italian league, then I don't think they're as, as underdogs as uh, some people would make them out. If, if there is a hand of God, I hope it comes down and thumps Maradona straight on the head. Right, that's very kind of you. I'm sure he appreciates your sentiments, Jim. At the end for the time being, thanks a lot. Let's get back to Rome and Elton. Thanks, Nick. Uh, what about the forgotten man of this World Cup final, Jorge Burachaga? What's his claim to fame? 
He scored the winner in the World Cup final four years ago, capitalising on a brilliant uh, bit of play by Diego Maradona. And he has really come to the fore uh, in the last few games they've played, Graham Taylor, hasn't he? Well, like the Argentinian uh, side, as the tournament has progressed, they have got that little bit stronger and their form has improved. And Burachaga represents that. Um, I think the West German team would ignore him at their peril. He's got this ability. He's not been at his best, but he's now back at the very highest game for him. And he is a potential match winner. Whilst all the talk is going on about Maradona, it could yet be Burachaga that actually pierces the West German defence. It's interesting, Gary, to see in, in the West German team, Pierre Litvarski still in there. He was there in 82, 86, and, and here he is again. Uh, well, he's a great player. Um, he's been around for quite some time now, as you said. But um, he's a great little dribbler and can make things happen. Actually, we, we were quite pleased he didn't play against ourselves. Um, we were a little bit concerned about him because he darts all over the place. Tell me, what about uh, Lothar Mateus? Uh, I mean, four years ago, he actually marked Maradona. Beckenbauer has said he won't do that today, but I suppose there's always a chance that he'll, he'll come across him at some stage uh, during the 90 minutes or so. But how key, how influential do you see Mateus having played against him now? Well, very, very much so. I think he's a very important player for the Germans. I think he's probably been one of the most outstanding players in the tournament. Um, he didn't perhaps have his best game against England, um, but having said that, he could come good again today. I don't think he will mark Mar Maradona, but I think somebody will. And I think if they can tie Maradona down, I personally don't think that Argentina have got a lot left to offer, and I think that Germany will, will, will be fairly comfortable winners. What do you make of that? Well, I mean, I've gone for West Germany to, to win the final. Throughout the tournament, I've been feeling that Argentina have, have ridden their luck. But, you know, sometimes you get into a, to into a, a stadium like this and you actually hear the whistling when Maradona's name is mentioned and you start to say, now that's what a winner's about because he might just come and say, well, up yours. And if he does do that, in 20 seconds, you, can tell, you tend... I, at the moment now, tend to probably go against myself a little. I think West Germany, but I'm pretty certain West Germany will win. But I like to see the winners and win again. And Maradona here, it almost sounds as if the whole stadium is against him. When his picture comes on to the, the scoreboard at the end, when his name is mentioned, there's the whistling. And you know you're really at the top of your profession when you have to come out and play in that environment. The little lad is a winner and he does do things, but even then I can't bring myself to feel that he's got sufficient support from the rest of the team for them to overcome the West Germans. Diego Maradona, who announced his retirement from international football today. Today marks his final international uh, for Argentina. There are the teams. In fact, just uh, to the right here will be Diego Maradona, shaking hands with Lothar Mateus, Carlos Piado, the Argentinian manager who masterminded their win four years ago almost forgotten the role of the coach Graham four years ago because it was just all about Maradona but uh, you've got to know what you're doing haven't you do to coach a World Cup winning side well very much so and as you know I was very fortunate I spent some time with Brian Moore actually uh, watching the Argentinians train on Friday and then also was even more fortunate to have a 15-minute conversation with Carlos Bilardo uh, very interesting I mean he has brought this team in it's now in his second successive uh, World Cup final and as he said to me you know uh, when you've done that after eight years he thinks it's time to sort of take a holiday I said how long will it last he said well I'd like it to be another eight years but a very very shrewd man done extremely well because somebody's got to just keep the the lead together and uh, with a player like Maradona you know where all the attention is there then I'm sure Bill uh, Bilardo not only looks after that but also pays attention to the rest of the players as well very shrewd man and a very nice man Thanks very much indeed, uh, Graham. The National Anthems, prior to the 1990 World Cup Final. 